welcome to HealthQuest. My name is Dr. Robert Stashko, and I have a great guest panel here tonight again uh, for another exciting show. Uh, tonight's kind of a different twist from shows we've done in the past. Uh, I've always, in, in shows before, tried to pick a favorite fruit or a favorite vegetable, uh, something you can bring from home and talk about. What we're going to go over tonight is a, is a real neat self-analysis that anyone can do at home. And what's interesting about it, it's very accurate. I mean, I have seen this test be so accurate in practice, it's unbelievable. But what's nice about it, people can check it on a daily basis or a weekly basis and get a good feeling of possibly where their health is. What we're going to talk about tonight is an ancient Chinese fingernail and tongue analysis. I don't like to use the word diagnosis because, again, we're not really diagnosing disease with this. We're looking at possibly preventing different types of diseases by doing this. But what's interesting is why the fingernails? The interesting about fingernails, if you study Chinese medicine or acupuncture, all the major meridians end in the fingers and toes. But it's much easier to look at the fingernails than always the toes all the time. That's how we look at the, at the fingernails. But the meridians pass and end at those areas. And also the blood supply is very rich in the fingers, in the nail beds. So all of your nutrients that you take, your vitamins, your minerals, your food you eat, the nutrients are transferred into the nail beds. So it's a very vascular and very good area to look at for general health and well-being. So what we're going to discuss first is how healthy are our nails? And the thing we look at first are little half moons. Now we're going to describe a few cases that we have here and have an illustration on what this looks like. But generally uh, the first one we're going to look at is going to be a, a person who has a spot or spots mm -hmm. on the nails. So I don't know if, uh, if you have that up right now. But what you want to see on this nail bed first of all is the nail itself looks a little soft, a little brittle, but it has a white spot. Now, many times people will have multiple white spots on the fingernails or maybe just one white spot. <clears throat> but the spots on the nails are indicative of a hormonal imbalance. Now, this could be estrogens, this could be any hormone in the system. Also, the white spots can be indicative of a subclinical thyroid because the thyroid controls all the hormones in the body. So that's what we see on this first one. And this patient also, if you look at the nail bed area, basically has very little, if any, half moons. And these are called lunas. And when you have multiple ones, they're called lunae. Okay? Why we should have these lunas on our nails, and we'll tell you which fingers are the most important, is that's a sign that there's good oxygen within the tissues. Because like I mentioned before, it's a rich supply of blood flow to the nail bed. So when you have half moons or lunas, on the nail bed area, it's a sign that the circulation and blood flow is generally pretty good to the, uh, to the system itself. And incidentally, every finger equates to a certain organ system. That's something that gets a little involved, but just so you know, the fingers equate to different organs too. It's quite interesting. Why we look at the, the nails too, which is interesting, or the fingers, is that within six to eight months, we regenerate nail beds. So by looking at the nails, we're looking at chronic health conditions or potential health conditions. The tongue, which we'll talk a little bit at the end, uh, the layers on the tongue regenerate every three days. So the tongue's a more accurate way of looking at acute or recent type conditions. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through a little bit about the tongue analysis. So that was uh, uh, the nail bed we saw with the white spot. The second nail bed, I believe, is uh, dealing with uh, the uh, ridges or so. Uh, and if you look at this next, next nail bed, uh, well, actually it's a pale color that's on this. You notice the, the nails look whiter, and there are very little, if any, luna on the nails. So this is a patient who basically has poor circulation because, again, the nail bed should be pink. It's also a sign that it's possible anemia that's developing in this patient. And, and generally, the symptoms this patient has is coldness. Might have hands cold at times and, and not as good a circulation as can be. So that's what we see on, on this particular case. On the other case now we're looking at, we see, again, some luna that are there, but we see ridges. Now, uh, ridges that go uh, vertical, as long as they're not real deep ridges, this patient has beginnings of some deep ridge formation, that's a sign that there generally is a problem with the adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands are very much involved with stress with cortisol production. So a patient like this who gets deeper ridges on multiple fingers, I would pretty much send out for a cortisol, salivary cortisol test to see if it's showing up in the, the saliva too. So that's an interesting case also. 
But all of those cases we showed so far do not have enough Luna. The last case that we're going to show here is a case with the Lunas, multiple lunar eye. Okay, and what this means is, is we should have everyone when they have good circulation should have large Lunas on each thumb. That is crucial. And they should have Lunas on the next three fingers, the index finger, the middle finger, and of course the ring finger. We should not have Lunas on the pinky. It's the only finger in the, on the hand that Luna shouldn't be there. And the reason why that is, if a person has Luna on the pinkies, it's a sign of possible blood pressure problems and possibly a history of heart disease. Now, I'm not saying that this person is going to have a heart attack or has heart disease right now, but like I said before, it's an analysis. It's a preventative measure of looking at the fingers and getting an idea, first of all, how good your circulation is, and second of all, do you have these Luna where they should be? And what's really crucial is when people just have Lunas on the pinkies and nowhere else. Remember I mentioned uh, the thumbs, there should be pretty large ones on the thumbs. <clears throat> but if a person has them just on the pinkies, that uh, is a very severe case and we will send for further even medical testing because there might be something going on, autoimmune disease or something more serious for their, their health. Because remember, what we're talking about here is oxygenation. The more oxygen you have going to your tissues, the healthier you are. Because oxygen is life. I always tell people, just take a rubber band or a piece of um, uh, string, tie it around your finger and see how long it takes till your finger turns blue. What are you doing? You're cutting off the oxygen supply. Eventually that finger will become gangrenous and basically be dead. So oxygen is paramount. So by looking at these areas, we have some good ideas of what, what's going on with our general vascularity and general health. Some other interesting things that we'll just talk about, we can't show right now, is when a patient comes in and has a black line going down any of the fingers, okay, it doesn't matter which finger it would be, but a black line going down in a vertical position, there's a good chance that person has internal bleeding somewhere. Okay, just a good, good chance could be a factor. If the line is black or brown and goes horizontal, and I've seen this test out in about 90% of the cases, that's a chance they should be checked for melanoma. This is a very serious problem. So I don't see it too often, but when I do, uh, we basically refer out. Um, <coughs> other areas would be uh, multiple white spots. Could also mean mineral deficiencies, zinc. Soft nails, when people have soft nails, it's a sign that they, their general mineral status is low. That they're, they're low on certain minerals, and they should be on a, a, a basic <coughs> trace mineral, and then we can investigate which single mineral might be involved with something like that. So that's the, the interesting thing about the fingernails is that we can get a general idea of where your health could be. And it's very accurate. I mean, I've seen this phenomenal changes with this turnout and patients who look at this on a daily basis. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is your tongue. And like I mentioned, uh, the tongue, all the major meridians pass through the tongue. So this is another reason why the tongue is such a valuable diagnostic uh, piece of uh, area to look at in the body. Um, the tongue, if you have red spots on the tip of the tongue, that's a sign there could be heart problems. Very, very accurate. If the spots are red along the whole tongue or all over the front of the tongue along the sides, that's a sign of hormonal imbalances. So again, we start looking at the case history and finding out whether there's a hormonal imbalance with this patient. If a person has a white or, or pasty tongue, that's a sign that there's probably a yeast problem within the body. And I do want to mention one thing too. That goes hand in hand with yellow nails. 99% of the time, if the nail bed is yellow, they're going to have a coated tongue. And that's usually a candida issue or a yeast problem, uh, a dysbiotic problem in the bowel. That's another key factor. Um, Another really neat point is if you pick up your upper lip, that's kind of hard to show, so you pick your upper lip up and there's a little piece of skin that comes down from the upper lip into the top of the, the palate. If on that little piece of skin you see a little like cyst formation or so, that could mean that there's a polyp developing within the intestinal tract. And I've seen this be accurate in about 90% of the cases. So it's something I look at on every patient uh, to see if they have it or not. And uh, generally, that's, that's kind of like the main issues on the tongue. Oh, one more thing I do want to mention, very important. If you pick the tongue up and look underneath it, you'll see veins, two major veins that run underneath your tongue. 
If these veins are dark, dark blue, I mean almost black, that's a sign that that person is heavy metal toxic. And the liver can no longer remove the heavy metals. And it's, it's a very, very accurate test to see what's going on with the liver and, and the toxicity of metals, which is the key thing. So these are just some areas you can look at and, and, and experiment. You know, when you're at home, look at this weekly or daily and, and see if you're seeing changes. And if you're on you know, a diet or you're taking supplements or you're doing something for your health and it's working, you're gonna see those areas change. And it's just something that you can do at home, which I think is, is very valuable. I don't know if you guys, if you guys checked yours at all and you've been looking at them and stuff. And uh, if you're on certain supplements, do you notice some changes? Mm -hmm. When I had heavy metal poisoning, mine were dark. There you go. So there's a, a definite proof that there is a, a validation of that being involved, you know, with something like that, too. Uh, people will ask me questions like, how did all this stuff come about? Well, what's interesting with oriental medicine, I mean, it's mm -hmm. been around for thousands of years. And people know all about acupuncture and, you know, different types of Tai Chi and the techniques and stuff. They, they really looked at the idea of the body being balanced. And how can we look at certain signs that the body is telling if something's wrong? And what I like about it, it's truly preventative. And uh, that's why people believe in acupuncture and get it done. I mean, it definitely opens up the energy pathways and the chi. You guys have heard known people with acupuncture treatments and things like this. This is just another offshoot of, uh, of the oriental practice. Dr. Stasser, you don't see acupuncture getting into major hospitals do you, in the country? It is in, in, in some hospitals yeah. in the U.S. right now, yes, it is. Uh, because, again, they're beginning to see that it does have a place. And it, it, it's, it's truly a way of trying to unblock blockages within the system. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of glad to see it happening. I, I always had a chart that um, has all the organs of the body mm -hmm. and what time of day they start nourishing themselves. Yes. From what time to what time. And that wasn't, it was used for medicine, but it was also used for uh, what they call DIMAC, the death touch. Mm -hmm. But I have the chart, and that's what it shows. You know, it's amazing it's about that chart, too. It, it, if certain conditions, like between 1 and 3 in the morning, mm -hmm. if people are waking up consistently at that time, that's the liver time. So a lot of times it's a sign that the liver is not working properly, uh -huh. you see. And, and certain times of the day, if you're on certain <clears throat> herbs or if you're on medications for certain conditions, it's good to take them around the time that the organ's active. It's a 24-hour yeah. clock. Right. You know, it's really interesting. So I, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It really does. That would be a chart worth having. It definitely would, Terry. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and the thing of it is, these are things people yeah. can do on their own, you know. And, and it's simple stuff to learn. You know, it's nothing complica complicated about it, you see. And uh, you guys have done th stuff with herbs and stuff over the years, oh, right? right? And, and uh, you've, you've treated the body naturally. And uh, have anybody had any acupuncture done? Acupressure. Acupressure, yeah. Well, I studied it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you like this idea of this fingernail stuff? It's kind of interesting that you can mm -hmm. kind of Yeah. It. Tells you why. Yeah. Yeah. I know I, I know I don't have any circulation, but that proves it. <laughs> but see, the nice thing is, if you do things to try to help that, right. it should change. The, the Luna should come back. You should well, actually I see him getting... I think it's always like that. I think it has to do with how good my arm is for the day and my mm -hmm. hand is. Mm -hmm. But what you'll see long term is that if it's chronic, that's not going to change as much, which right. is a key thing. But once again, guys, another show has gone by. And I want to thank you all for coming by. I hope it was an interesting topic. And I hope you check your fingernails and tongue every day. And as, as always said, uh, write your own prescription for your own health. It's very important. And you write that prescription, remember. Thank you.